Sunday. Today, Chris and I are going to be tackling a project that we have kind of been putting off because we did go to Ikea and get these things a while back, but I couldn't find the perfect curtains that I wanted for this area. Um, and I wanted to make sure that they were blackout curtains. Um, and I do really love the quality of the ones that I just did receive. Now I did receive these for review purposes, but when I saw their website and how pretty the curtains seemed and they had, um, customized, customizability, I guess you could say, because you get to pick what kind of lining you want, what style valence, like top you would like for the curtain. Anyway, I'll show you those in a bit, but first I want to show you that I did purchase these um, on Amazon a while back, and they're extendable, an extendable curtain rod. Um, here, I'll show you what the brand is, and then it's extendable. Um, there are a lot of supports because we have a really long... Door. I don't know if we're going to need all of those supports. We'll see. But in the morning, the sun shines through so strongly. It blinds you. So we really need it in the, for the morning time. Otherwise, we have really beautiful light from it. So I'm not going to close that off at all times, of course. Um, and then we have these to put up the curtains with. But I found out that my curtains came with little hooks. I'll show you. I might be returning those to Ikea. Because my two pages curtains, I need to iron these or steam them. But look how these are really nice and heavy. When I took them out of the box, I was like, wow, these are nice. And here is the top piece. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. I love the little pleats. It's so pretty. And then it has the blackout lining. Really nice and thick. I love it. So I'm going to steam those. They're super long. They're just like a nice plain gray. Of course, Holly had to get in on the mix. So I ended up going with this a little bit darker of a gray. Um, like I went with a tone in our sofas that was a deeper gray. And our walls are like a soft eggshell or a little bit cream, cream color. Um, I can put the name of the actual paint color in a moment here, but I wanted that to be a nice contrast. All right, I'll tell you, I'll show you guys when we're on step two. Today for brunch, I used these loaded potatoes from Trader Joe's, but spruced it up with some eggs, scrambled eggs that I'm going to put together with it. It's very flavorful. And then also going to put a little bit of avocado. I have some cut up avocado over here. I've got tons of stuff going on because I've been filming some recipes like my air fried apples here with frozen quip, which I'm going to serve on the side of the brunch too but let's get that plated. Excuse the laundry sound in the background, but here's step two. But Chris has said he wants to put two extra supports on the end because these curtains are really nice and heavy. So our bar definitely needs the extra support to support, um, we're gonna do four panels across. Look at that, it's perfect. Perfect height, I mean. I love the detail on the top of these too. I do need to steam them, but I'm gonna steam them once they're up. And we have these little rings that we used to hook them into place, or that Chris is using, I should say. Wow, this really does take away all of the glare on the TV and everything. This is housewives. <laughs> I'm taking down all the Easter decor right now, you might notice. But yeah, the curtains look so good. I love the detail to them at the top. And this is four panels. I'll leave all of the information down below for you guys, but definitely so excited at how much light these blackout curtains block. Babe, will you open it for me just to show them how bright it is otherwise? <laughs> That's so crazy. Wow. It looks so good though, I love it. Thanks for helping me, babe. So for dinner tonight, I made this oven chicken with pesto and panko crumbs, Parmesan cheese, mozzarella cheese. It smells so good. And I will leave the recipe down below. So excited 
today with the game didn't even record us watching it, but woo woo, son. That's right. Next game on Saturday. Good morning, it's Friday and I had to document this because I'm proud of myself because I got up at 5.30 this morning to go to Pilates and I was not feeling it. Um, it's that time of the month, I was feeling kind of just crappy, you know, when I woke up this morning, but I feel so much better after going to Pilates. I'm so glad I went. I'm gonna jump in the shower right now. And it was a hard class too. Caitlin is one of the best teachers, I think. Um, if you go to the Queen Creek studio, or I believe she also goes to the Gilbert studio for Club Pilates, she's awesome. So last night I got this package from Too Faced and it definitely made my night so pretty. I love all these items. So I already know that I love this mascara, the better than sex, but this is the waterproof version. And I love this for summer because yeah, it's so hot here. You need waterproof mascara. Um, and the shadow insurance. And then this I have not used yet, but it looks so beautiful. Italian spritz palette. Late Como Cocktail Inspired Eyeshadow Palette. So I've actually not opened up the packaging yet. My nails match. It has the same packaging, same logo as the box and it's metal. Oh my goodness, these are gorgeous. Oh, I love the Mamma Mia purple, that's so pretty. Wow, and the Como After Dark, that's a color I would definitely use in my crease all the time. Oh, I'm so excited to use this palette. Okay, I will show you guys a few looks probably next week because I don't really wear makeup that often on the weekends. Um, maybe, maybe I'll wear a little bit on Saturday, we'll see. But I can't wait to try this out. So Chris and I are working from home today on this beautiful Friday. It's like 95 out right now. And yeah, I went and got that. But this psycho next to me, I love her to pieces, but oh my gosh, when we look what she did. Battle wounds from Chick-fil-A from barking at the people. She's so crazy. Chris and I just got done doing that same hike. I'm gonna insert a couple clips and pictures as I'm talking here. Oh my gosh, today we actually saw so many pretty blooming flowers on the saguaro cactus, which is actually our state flower, that flower, the cactus flower. Um, we saw some horned lizard. I think it's called a horned, desert horned lizard. He was so cute. It looked like a little medium sized dude and he was so saw cute. a ton of these blister beetles and they were so pretty. They have like yellow and black on their shell and then red uh, on their head and like their antenna. And they were just like kind of crawling along the trail and Chris is like, definitely don't let those touch you because I guess your skin starts to blister if they touch you, but they're really, they were cool to see on the trail. And we just got some Woo -woo, coffee time. So last week I shared our Bisbee trip with you guys and I asked if you wanted to hear about our supernatural ghost stories or what we consider ghost interactions when we stayed at the Copper Queen in Bisbee. And so Chris and I are gonna talk a little bit about that with you today. I need to fix my hair. My point of coming on here for a second is actually the makeup I have on right now. I did a super natural makeup. I posted about it on Instagram, so you may have already seen it. I really like to do on the weekend if I do any makeup, which is rare on the weekend, but if I do, then I only do a concealer. The one that I've been trying out and I haven't really spoken about yet is this It Cosmetics Bye Bye Dark Spot Correcting Serum. This stuff is amazing. It's so pretty under the eyes. Um, it looks like second skin. It does give good coverage. It doesn't crease on me. I actually love the brush at the top. You do want to go ahead and clean that at least weekly, but it works really well. If you've ever used a cosmetics brush, it's the same quality on the top of this. It's like a really nice dense brush too, to blend it all out. And I use that today. 
Um, usually I use a, just my sponge or whatever, like a beauty blender, but today I used the brush and I really did like it. That's Holly back there making the noise, if you hear that. <laughs> Anyways, that's a concealer I used today and I have been using. And then I've been loving the Laura Mercier translucent powder under my eyes, but the, um, is this the one that has a little bit of highlight? It might not be. I thought it had a little bit of a luminescence to it. You can kind of see it in the jar. I believe it does. It's really soft if it has luminosity under the eyes. Um, I really love it. It's so pretty and it gives like a tiny bit of coverage. And then I love the Soleil Tan de Chanel still. I, this stuff, I've talked about it for years and years. It's so good. It smells good too. I don't know something about it is nostalgic. And then I've been really loving this Pacifica Fluffy Blushy. Um, I got these, I think last year sent from Pacifica and since then I've really loved this color. See, it has a kind of gold flex in it and a really pretty flush pink. And I think it's just the perfect color for a natural look. So I have that blended into my cheeks and this is called Bloom. And then on my eyes, I have the Charlotte Tilbury Golden Eclipse. Look at how sparkly and beautiful that is. It's so glowy, that's what I have on my eyes. And then I did use a little bit of this um, Nude Stick Magnetic Matte Eye Color in Army just to line my lashes a bit. And then for my mascara, I use the Pillow Talk push-up lash from Charlotte Tilbury and Give Me Brow for my brows. And that's it. Oh, no, my lips. This, which I really, really love when I have no makeup on. But with the makeup, the blue tones in it came out a little bit more. This is the Clarins Lip Comfort Oil and I don't, number 13 Mint Glam. And this has like blue properties to it to make your teeth look extra white. So, I do love that and it's super hydrating and I love lip oils, but I needed a little bit of color. So I put a teeny bit of the Jaclyn Hill lip oil on top in Candy Drip. This one has a lot of color though, so I just did a little bit. And oh my goodness. Oh, I forgot to tell you about the glow drops. Then I did a little bit of the, oh, everything's rubbed off on the packaging. I'll have to just insert it right here, but these are the cover effects drops. I did do a couple of those. Um, on my cheeks too, right here, down my nose a bit and right up underneath my brows. <laughs> that sounds like a lot for a natural makeup look, but I like it. It did. It took me only like five minutes where my makeup usually would take me about 30 minutes to. Chris and I are about to film the ghost stories from the Copper Queen. Um, the Copper Queen, by the way, has an entire book of stories, like of people's experiences that they had at the hotel and you can ask to read it and they'll put it out for you. It's really cool. Um, and now I didn't put my experience in there cause I'm not really sure if mine was or not, but Rick, uh, Rick, my brother-in-law, he put his in there, I think. And then my father-in-law had an experience there and Chris was actually trying to find it, but it was probably in the archives because it was from years past. Um, also, if you notice, I'm wearing the silicone ring because since we were hiking today, it's easier. I like wearing this on the weekends. I don't have to worry about, <laughs> I don't have to worry about um, my ring getting hurt. So I'll talk about my experience first. So when we first got to the hotel, we had not, at least I, I don't know about you, but I did not pre look up the ghost stories or any of the information about the ghost stuff that went on in the hotel. I know that right. I think there's, isn't there even I, shows that went there? Like ghost yeah, adventures? Yeah, I knew there were ghosts, but I didn't know about them. Right. But so the first night we were there, we had, I think some activity happened on our floor. So we stayed on the second floor which when he had gone to go and get water or something at the Walgreens down the road and I didn't go with him and he left to, he didn't lock the door cause he was going to come back. Um, but he definitely closed the door all the way. And then when he was gone, it opened on its own, like really slowly, but it opened on its own. I'm like, well, it could have just been the breeze, whatever. So close the door, but then it happened a second time. So then I locked it. 
Didn't I? Because you had to use your key, I think, when you came back. Right. Yeah, I locked it to make sure. I was like, well, it's not going to open now. Like, if it opens now, definitely it's going to be ghost activity. But then later, we found out that that's one of the things that the Julia ghosts. Do you want to tell them the experiences first and then tell them about the ghosts? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that same night, um, my brother claims that he was laying in bed and somebody whispered his name. He said, in his ear, yeah. Right. So he, he sat up and was like, babe, to his wife, was like, babe, what, what's up? And she's like, what? And he's like, you said my name. And she's like, no, I didn't. And, and then... Uh, and she was like almost asleep. And she's like, what? Yeah. So anyways... No, I didn't say anything. Um, then, uh, what was it? Well, that was, that was the first night. So there wasn't a whole lot going on. Yeah. But then that next day we found out that that was probably Julia that did that to Rick because that's one thing that she does is yeah, we'll, whisper we'll, to the guys that yeah she she'll find a guy in the hotel she room that she likes and and we'll kind of and and well we'll explain to her about that later because then like later on the next night things got really crazy that's when we had the the bottle fell off of the sink into the garbage can mm. like it just. <laughs> yeah. And we were both in the bedroom, and you can see into where the yeah, bathroom you can, is. Yeah, the reflection you can but see. But we weren't anywhere near it, um, yeah. so that was a little weird. Um, and then the lights went out, and the two areas that have the most activity, the lights went in out. In the hallways in the hotel. In the hotel, Yeah, right? where they have, like, the and most So it wasn't too. our floor, but the third and the fourth floor up above. So we go upstairs uh, to check it out. Um, the lights were off. Uh, we had decided the night before that we were going to go, you know, just kind of check it out, see if we can find any evidences of ghosts. Uh, we didn't know anything about the lights being off. But we went up there. We thought it was a little weird that the lights were off. But um, before we went upstairs, there was a ghost tour downstairs. And they were telling uh, the people on the ghost tour some of the stories. And they had mentioned the third and fourth floor. So we assumed, or at least I did, that they just shut the lights off for this ghost tour. Um, the ghost tour went up to the second floor. There was a little lobby there. They talked about it a little bit. They never went upstairs. Um, so her and I decided to go, go upstairs. But, um, but anyway, <laughs> so we go upstairs. Um, it's a little spooky. It feels weird. Um, she doesn't want to go down the corridors. Uh, but only I because it was the, no, only the dark ones. Because we went around the whole floor. Right, so you'd stay in the. Lit, I was like, I'm not areas, going down but the on dark areas always. that were dark, which happened to be right by Billy's room and Julia's room. She decided she was over it. She didn't want to go down the dark corridors where the lights were not working. I was like, how about it? <laughs> I'm gonna stay over here. So, so I went ahead and I walked around a couple times here, and I even filmed a little bit, uh, which we'll put right here. Looking for ghosts. So far, no signs of ghosts. I'm looking. And everyone will show up on the video. Creepy hotel. It's actually really awesome, but for some reason they got the lights off. I'm going to the stairs. This woman, she committed suicide in here. It's a big story, you should look it up. I'm not gonna get into it. But she's known to be seen on these stairs in her lingerie, old school, like turn of the century lingerie, with a bottle of wine. Let's go. Billy's a little eight-year-old that drowned. He's a little mischievous ghost. Well, no signs of ghosts. I tried. Watch when I shut the camera off and let's see one. 
I overheard some of the people in the ghost tour, and then we also went down and we talked to the people downstairs at the uh, at the desk, uh, who were more than happy to give us information. And so, one of, and I think it was like 1906, you can look this up, I may be wrong on the date, but somewhere around 1906, um, there was this woman named Julia Lowell. Um, and she was a, a working girl of sorts. Uh, prostitution was legal back then. Um, and she lived in the hotel and she ran her clientele out of the hotel, this particular room. Um, she fell in love with one of her clients. Uh, she told him about her feelings. He did not reciprocate the feelings. So she killed herself in the room. Um, that room, apparently she never really left. She just wandered the halls. Um, she tries to find guys that she's attracted to. Yeah, they said they see her on the stairwell, w wearing like fancy lingerie, like, you know, old fashioned lingerie. Wearing a bottle of, or and, like, wearing, holding, holding a, a bottle, bottle of wine, wine yeah. trying to seduce guys. She'll lay in guys' beds. She does not like women, though. She does not like women. She's and if not she finds a guy really that she usually. likes, she gets really jealous and she can scratch, um, which my brother experienced because I guess he was cuddling with his wife and then felt a pain on his leg and in the morning he discovered a big scratch on his leg. That was the second night. So that the first the night he night. heard the whispering in his ear and then the second night he the scratch, scratch thing. But that was after he found out about the whole Julia stuff because we didn't know anything about her right. prior. Yeah. So she uh, <laughs> she likes to walk around and open up doors to, to peek inside and see if there's any gentlemen that need her calling. Um, she'll lay in people's beds. Um, She's one of the more active ones. There's an, actually one that's even more active, which was a little boy who was a son of one of the employees there, also in the 1900 something, might've been around 1912. Um, he drowned, uh, he drowned in the hotel. Um, and he likes to go around and play pranks, move things around take shiny objects and move them from one place to another like jewelry. they said from different in different rooms entirely right. like if you leave candy out he'll take it or take jewelry the candy and the and jewelry like, is or supposed to keep your jewelry shiny kind of locked up because he will grab it and move it around yeah to other places and find it in different room. rooms and different places in the hotel so i didn't see anything as you could see there was nothing i got excited when i saw some blinking lights down at the end of the hallway the first time um and ended up just being uh, it was it was some like fire fire escape light or something. It wasn't anything big. Um, I did want to note, however, that on the fourth floor, which is right in front of Billy's room, the, the lights were off. Um, I was walking down and I could have sworn the floor was wet. It was really weird. The floor it, it just felt like I was walking on wet carpet. Um, but my feet were not wet. It's I don't know. Maybe I was just. Tripping out because the uh, <laughs> the environment was a little spooky, but I, I could have sworn that I, it was sloshing when I stepped. I even fell down to the carpet, it felt wet, but my shoes were not wet, I had no water on my fingers, it was really weird. Um, so that was about the extent of my experience. Now my brother, on the other hand, mm -hmm. later that night, um, he was a little spooked, so him and his wife decided to go around and film a few things. And he thinks he might have found a couple of orbs. Or tell us what you guys think. They'll take a look at yeah. his video. You'll see he's standing right in front of the door of Julia Lowell's room. It's called the Julia Lowell room, um, which is actually really neat. Uh, before we show the video, uh, my lovely wife will insert a picture of the <laughs> Julia Lowell room in Bisbee, which has a painting portrait of Julia Lowell. Yeah, you can stay yeah, in so the room. So you can room. stay in the room. And Billy's room, you and, can stay and in she, too. And that's her room. She lives there. <laughs> wow. But go, um, so take a look at the uh, the video my brother took, and, and you'll see two orbs that will come right in front of him like this uh, that go right into the doorway of Julia Lowell's room, or what appear to be orbs. You be the judge. So I don't know what you guys think. If you think those are orbs, you be the guest. I kind of thought they were orbs. They look transparent. But then again, we want to see orbs, so. <laughs> At first I thought it, I don't know. It look, could be dust particles, I don't know. I think we're wanting to see orbs, I don't so know. So you see, you kind of have a tendency to see what you want to. 
Um, either you tell way. me. We believe in all that supernatural activity stuff, though, but... But even still, if yeah. it doesn't bug you, um, I was hoping to see, like, the uh, the gray mist my dad saw and wrote about in the book. Um, didn't see any of that. I didn't have much of anything other than the wet floor feeling. I didn't tell them the whole story of your dad's experience. Off. I just told them that you wrote it, that he wrote in the book, The Ghost Oh. Book. So yeah, my dad and my mom love Bisbee, Bisbee, so they go there quite frequently, the Copper Queen. Um, and there's a bar down at the bottom um, that they would go to have a margarita or whatever. Uh, my dad said that he was there ordering a couple of margaritas for my mom and him. And then um, at the end of the bar, there appeared to be a figure, uh, like in a human humanoid shaped figure, but it wasn't a human, it was just like this gray mist. Um, and he looked at it and he said, then it just kind of like went into the wall and disappeared. That's and so cool. that was about the extent of it, and he wrote about it. That's pretty cool. In the uh, in the book, uh, which I did try to find, I couldn't find it. If you get a chance to go, the Copper Queen's a beautiful hotel. Um, it's it's full of history. It's full yeah, it's of really handcrafted cool. art and wood carving on on the banisters, and I mean it. It is like a blast from the past. Um, but yeah. But uh, yeah, so that was our ghost stories from Bisbee. And if we ever go again, <laughs> we'll see if we can find some ghosts again. Yeah, we'll let you know. So not exactly the turnout we wanted for the first game of the second series, but you know, it's okay. So <laughs>